Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're going to talk about this thing right here, which is the Lenovo Think Center M90NIOT. This is far from the fanciest machine that we have looked at. And you will know that we have looked at a lot of Project Tiny Mini Micro machines that are a little bit bigger than this, but they also offer, I think, a lot more features. This particular unit offers something that I think is pretty special, or a couple things. First, the price. Now, the retail price on this is actually a lot higher, but we actually purchased this unit for $200. You could either purchase that on eBay, or it was even offered for $200 at the end of December on the Lenovo.com site. Pricing may have changed, but this comes with a Core i3 processor, four gigabytes of memory, a 128 gig SSD. We're gonna talk about all these specs in a little bit. It also came with Windows 10 Home, and it came with a one-year on-site warranty. That's absolutely crazy, a $200 device, and if it breaks, Lenovo is going to have someone come out and fix it. That's absolutely insane. It would cost them more money to go and fix something like this. Now, William actually did a full review of this system on the STH main site last year. So we're not going to go into our full Project Tiny Mini Micro bits. And there are a few reasons that we also just kind of can't do that. But I did want to give an overview of what this is, what it's good for, what it's probably not great for. Because as you would imagine, for a $200 device, you are definitely making some trade-offs. But one of those trade-offs is not noise because this is basically a silent system. Now you might have seen this and thought to yourself, wait, doesn't Lenovo have a much smaller M90N Nano as well? And it does, and that's this machine right here. We actually had gotten this machine because this was gonna be part of a project that we were doing. And we thought like, well, you know, we're doing this project Tiny Mini Micro and well, maybe if there was something that was a little bit smaller and it was kind of in the spirit of Tiny Mini Micro, maybe that would work. And we purchased this unit. This one actually, well, I think we're still gonna do a video on it. So I don't wanna give too much away. It is probably not my favorite either, uh, but it's actually kind of a cool unit in itself. And if you look at these two units side by side, we can actually kind of stack them up here. You can see that they're basically the same size, but there are actually feature differences between these two units. So what I want to do is just kind of maybe do a really quick one in terms of what the differences are on these units, but I really want to focus mostly on the IoT variant. So the quick game plan for this video is that we are going to go over the hardware of this, which is actually kind of pretty cool. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus a little bit on a quick comparison to the M90N Nano, the non-IoT version of this. Normally we would next have performance and power consumption. We do have the power consumption figures because, well, that's easy and we had done that originally in our original review. But on the performance side, well, that's a little bit of a challenge, specifically because a lot of the benchmarks that we're running these days need a certain amount of memory. And this particular system, not only is it only a dual core four thread system, which is kind of on the lower end, but it also, well, it only has four gigs of memory, which isn't enough memory to run a lot of our benchmarks. Now we do have some benchmarks on the STH main site in Windows that William ran, so we can go refer you to that, but we're really gonna kind of more focus on, well, what could you use this system for instead of really getting into the performance because at the end of the day, this is a dual core low power processor. And you might notice that as part of the backdrop to this wonderful system, we have our STH hoodie. If you wanna go get a hoodie, you can check out our Teespring shop where you can go purchase one. It supports us, it also supports, I guess, Teespring and YouTube, but it does support us and helps us go buy these units. So that way we can go do these reviews. Lenovo did not send us this particular unit. They did send us one for the original review, but we purchased one for $200 from Lenovo.com. All right, so let's start the hardware overview. And something fun, unlike the big servers, I can actually just kind of go pick one of these things up. And so I'm probably just gonna hold it in my hand a lot just because I can with something this small. The first and probably the most obvious feature of this is really this kind of top design. I mean, it's actually kind of a cool design. You see these big fins in here and you see these crosses, but you also see, especially on some of the photos that you see online on Lenovo.com and elsewhere, you see two different types of heat sinks or what might look like two different types of heat sinks. They're not really two. Instead, on the system, there's actually a little plastic cover that's it's held on by clips. It's actually a little bit hard to take off. So I have it on here. We're gonna have some you know, other bits that we're gonna show you with it off. But this actually is kind of cool because as a passively cooled unit, a lot of the heat from the CPU is being dissipated up through the top of this chassis. And because it's being dissipated at basically this whole top of the chassis is like a giant heat sink, 
because of that, it actually gets pretty warm. And so Lenovo, instead of sitting there and just having like a bare warm piece of, you know, metal like heatsink chassis thing, they actually have this little plastic cover that's clipped in place that really makes sure that you don't touch that hot metal surface with your hand. I don't know why. I just think that that's kind of a cool little feature that you wouldn't necessarily know if you were just looking at the photos. And I didn't actually know because I didn't, you know, William did the original review, so I didn't even know this happened. And so it was kind of something just fun to see. All right, so looking at the front of the system, if we compare it to the M90N, the Nano, not the IoT version, you're going to see a big feature that's different, and you're going to see some features that are the same. The features that are the same are that we get two USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type A ports, so those are 10 gigabit ports. We also get a Type C Gen 2 port, which is also 10 gigabits per second. That's awesome. I mean, just getting three USB ports that are all 10 gigabit per second, I think is absolutely a great feature on both of these. However, on the IoT version, you're going to see that we get something a little bit better. Specifically, we get two serial COM ports. Now, to some people on YouTube, why you might be saying, well, why do I want a old fashioned serial COM port? I mean, there's USB 10 gig ports on there. Aren't those way better? And if I really want a COM port, I can just go and put a, you know, USB cable in there and I can have a converter to a serial port. So why would I even want something like this? And there's actually a really good reason. So this is an IoT design. And this IoT design is really designed to, you know, hook up things. And a lot of that actually goes all by serial. And so what you get with a serial port that you don't necessarily get with a USB port is that this serial port is an older style port. And on the older style ports, we have screws. Those screws allow you to keep the serial cable attached to this unit and doesn't you know, fall off and go somewhere. So if you're recording data over a serial interface or you're controlling something over a serial interface, you don't have to worry about somebody going in, knocking the cable and then losing that access. Personally, the reason I would use something like this would really be to go and be as a serial interface for a lot of the switches when we have to go set them up. I actually think I really like this <laughs> design. I know that it kind of seems a little simpleton of me, but I really like the fact that these things are built in. And, you know, just having a box like this that you can SSH to and have a serial interface is actually kind of convenient, especially since it's so low power and doesn't make any noise. And it's passively cooled. And just since we're on the front, you do actually get two other features. You get a headset jack and a power button. And that's the same that you would get on the M90N Nano. Moving to the rear of the unit, you can see that we again get a difference. Here we get a power port, we get a display port, we then get a USB 3.1 Gen 2 port, so that's another 10 gigabit type A port. The next port is a little bit interesting as well. This is a USB type C, it's also Gen 2, so 10 gigabit per second port, but you'll see that there's a little monitor logo on that. And the reason is that you can actually connect a second display output to this. And Lenovo actually gives you the USB type C to HDMI 2.0 B adapter with the system. I don't know, in a world where cell phones don't come with chargers anymore, I just kind of feel like it is nice that you actually get the little adapter in the box, especially in a $200 system. But those similarities between the two different types of systems actually end there because you'll see that on the M90N Nano, the non-IoT version, you get another USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, and then you get a NIC. However, on the IoT version, we actually get two one gig ethernet NICs. So that's right, this little fanless system also has dual one gig ethernet NICs. Lenovo has a number of different types of configurations for NICs. This particular system that we got has two Realtek, I think they're like RTL 8111 NICs. And so those are not necessarily the best NICs in the world, but at the end of the day, these are, you know, $200 devices. So I kind of feel like, you know, that's perfectly reasonable at this price range. Adding something like an Intel i210 NIC or two of them would probably add somewhere like, you know, $250 to $3 to the bomb cost. So by the time you get all the way through production and stuff, that would actually add a pretty significant amount to a low end system like this. Finally, on both the systems, we also get our antenna port. And this system, of course, does come with an antenna from Lenovo because we get Wi Fi. Another small difference that we saw was that on the bottom of this one that's nice and bright red, you actually get a one single red screw, which keeps this bottom section on. But on the IoT version, you get a ribbed version that's not bright red, and it has two screws that keep that cover on instead of just one. Once you undo those screws, you can actually just slide that little cover off and it comes off very easily. Now inside the system has some of the best and maybe not best portions of the system. And I wanna talk about both of those here. Let's start with the side that you can immediately see. Now you probably see this crazy 
blue thermal pad right here. And this thermal pad underneath here is actually a Samsung NVMe SSD. This only came with a 128 gigabyte SSD, but I guess it's still not too bad for a $200 system. One of the really cool things that you can do is that, well, you could use that maybe for an OS SSD. And I think our review system that William had actually had a 256 gig drive. But what you can also do is that there's another M.2 SSD slot. Now this M.2 SSD slot is a PCIe Gen 3 slot, but it is not a by four slot. It's only a by two slot. You're not going to necessarily be able to put the fastest NVMe storage in a system like this. And you just kind of have to deal with the fact that that's a limitation of the system. The other thing that you can do, though, is that you can use that for SATA. So you could have an M.2 SATA SSD and put it in the slot. There are a couple of other interesting features, though. So if we do get Wi-Fi up here. So we have an M.2 Wi-Fi. This is an Intel 802.11 AC unit, which is actually just really nice that you get Wi-Fi. So you actually get two one gig NICs. Plus you get Wi-Fi, which gives you a total of three network interfaces on the system. Now, the other side of the system near the boot SSD, we actually get a couple pretty interesting little points. So the first thing that you're going to see is that there's this hole right here, and that is for the fan. So we have the active version, which is here, but this is a passively cooled version. So we don't need that fan and it's not present. The other really interesting thing that we have here is we have a WAN port, which is labeled LTE as well. So you can actually put an LTE M.2 radio in here. You have a SIM card slot, so you can put your SIM card in there. And then at the edge of the chassis, there are two ports that are covered up in this unit. But I guess you could use that if you needed to go put some, you know, antenna leads in and out of this case. So not only do we get dual one gig Ethernet and we get Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but we could also potentially get a wireless WAN solution on this, which I think is awesome. So while this side of the internals is easy to access and has a lot of expandability, the other side frankly does not. We have a soldered on four gigabytes of memory, so you cannot expand that memory. You don't have an SO DIMM slot and you're just stuck with four gigs because that's what was configured in the system. I think Lenovo may have the option to go to higher memory capacity, but you know that's what we got. But the, I think the big issue there is if you have soldered on RAM like that, well, what do you do if you want to go and you need more? I mean, we couldn't even run a lot of our benchmarks with that four gigabytes. If we compare this to the Project Tiny Mini Micro nodes, where you actually get two SO DIMM slots that you can go expand, and on something, you know, an eighth gen Intel Core system like this, you'd be able to go potentially up to 64 gigabytes of memory in those, and you can configure it however you want. I mean, I think that that is a real reason that you should go for a Tiny Mini Micro node over something like this. And just being clear, it's not just limited to this IoT version, it's also the same for the M90 and just the Nano, the non-IoT version as well. I think this is an eight gigabyte model and eight gigabyte is frankly a lot better, but the reason I don't really like these as virtualization solutions, which was kind of my first thought of what we would use this for, the reason I don't really like it is just because you get stuck with a fixed memory capacity and you can't go up from there. Now, the CPU on this is the Intel Core i3 8145U. And that is a two core four thread processor. But there is something that is really important. It's also a very low power processor, which is important if you're going to go do something like have a passively cooled chassis like. A fun little fact about this particular Core i3 processor is that it was launched in the third quarter of 2018. And when it was launched and actually still on ARC today, it's a $289 part. So that's right, we managed to get this entire system with a current, because it's not discontinued yet, a current Core i3 processor for less than the MSRP of the processor itself. Frankly, in 2021, I feel like that's not necessarily the fastest. I mean, it's a two core, four thread processor, a low power processor. It's really not that fast. And Project Tiny Mini Micronodes actually have sockets or CPU sockets. So you can upgrade them if you want to somewhat. And they have a lot of different options. But here you're just kind of limited to what you get. Again, in a low cost system, we can make allowances for that. And it's fine if you're just kind of running a firewall or something like that. But it's not necessarily something that, you know, is a uh, really pleasant desktop experience, we'll just say. Even though it comes with Windows 10 Home, I would say that it is definitely, it's usable, but it's not really that fast compared to a lot of the other things that you can get. And I think that if I had the personal choice to run a desktop that was either this or maybe a little bit older project, like use Project Tiny Mini Micro Node, I actually think that some of the older Project Tiny Mini Micro Nodes are actually a better value uh, just because it's 
much faster. So in terms of power consumption, these are actually really interesting. The power consumption on the IoT model is actually a lot less than the non-IoT model. And what that practically means is that we get an idle that's just a little over five watts and we get a sub 25 watt maximum power consumption. That may not seem like a big deal, but it actually is important. So if you're thinking about using something like this for a firewall, just as an example, or you were going to use something that maybe had an IPMI controller, like a A-Speed AST 2500 BMC that was on it, just for that out-of-band management bit. Now you lose the out-of-band management for a solution like this, which is also a security surface. But on the plus side, this actually has basically the power consumption at idle of just about what that kind of B a modern BMC has at idle. So if you had something like an Atom C2558 or C3558 motherboard and you actually had a BMC on it, the BMC is you know a little over four watts usually, even with the system power down. And this is like around five watts. So you know it's not, it's pretty actually pretty comparable. In terms of power supply, it is not internal. You actually use a standard Lenovo 65 watt external power brick. This is the same kind of one that you would find on a Lenovo laptop. And you have seen on Lenovo laptops for years. So they, you know, you can go get them no problem. If you need to ever get a replacement, super easy to go find them. Also, just as a kind of fun little note, this wasn't the only thing that we got because we also got a mouse and then we got this keyboard. Oh my gosh. We have this keyboard, which is this big clunker of a keyboard. It is actually, it's actually a different keyboard that we got on this system than we got on the M90N, but both of them did come with keyboards. I don't know. I just kind of think that this is the kind of keyboard that I would have expected to see about 15 years ago. But on the other hand, this is a, you know, two, a system that we spent $200 on that has an on-site warranty, Windows 10, and it came with a free keyboard and mouse. So I am not going to complain about it. So let's get to the, so what, and what would you use a system like this for? I think that there are a couple of use cases that ever since get, I got one of these, I kind of thought like, okay, well, this machine would be absolutely perfect for a couple of use cases. The first one, I think I already alluded to, which is really that using these serial ports, I think that it is a really good device for being able to just go. And if you have some serial devices like legacy serial interface devices, and you just need something to go plug in, whether that's a switch or maybe some kind of like sensor or something like that, I think is actually a pretty solid option for just having that and not having to deal with USB dongles. The fact is that this system could not only, I guess, perform those kind of serial duties, but it can also do some kind of processing. You know, even if that was just, you know, taking your log file and parsing a log file or something like that, or just even orchestrating stuff, you know, you can put things like you run containers and stuff on this really easily. You don't have necessarily the most RAM to be able to do that, but you can go and, you know, use it like a normal system. Not only does it support Microsoft Windows, but it also has things like, I think, like the Azure IoT stack. I I think it's also like the Ubuntu it's actually certified for as well. So there are, you know, a number of IoT type applications that this particular system is certified for. And it's really easy to just go install another OS. You can put Ubuntu on here, it takes a matter of seconds. Okay, so this is definitely not the fastest system. It really doesn't take seconds because, well, it's just not fast enough to load the operating system that fast. But what I really mean by that is that there's no special steps or anything like that that you have to go through to be able to get the system to run Linux. It just kind of works. After all, this is just a normal x86 system. And so that is kind of nice. And if you're coming from the Raspberry Pi world and you wish you had something, you just run like x86 Linux, but that was around, you know, the same price and it wasn't necessarily, you know, that much more power and all that kind of stuff. I think this is actually kind of a cool little option. The other use case that this absolutely screams to me is as a router firewall. So if you want to run something like PFSense, and by the way, this week on STH, we also just talked about, you know, the PFSense Community Edition versus PFSense Plus. So that is a change that's coming. Or if you want to run to like, you know, OPN Sense or something like that, you could totally do that on a system like this. Now, there are lower cost options if you want to go do that. And you can go get things like Atom based processors to go and run, you know, your firewall appliances and stuff like that. But these do have the advantage of that they have higher clock speed, you know, higher end cores in them than the Atom series does. And just the fact that it is made by a major OEM Lenovo, you're not buying some kind of random small vendor that you've never heard of before. I mean, Lenovo, let's face it, is a pretty big vendor. And by the way, you get that on-site warranty, which is kind of cool. Overall, I actually kind of ended up liking this a little bit more than I thought I would. I was a little apprehensive to be frank. I kind of already knew what the M90 
and Nano would, you know, give me. And this one was kind of a lower power one. And I only had two cores. I mean, this is like literally the slowest system that I think we've had in the lab in the last probably two, three years. And the fact that we ran into the problem where we only have four gigs of memory and we we're having memory issues just running our benchmark suite, that's literally because I don't think we've tested only a four gigabyte, you know, system in over two years. But at the same time, it does have a lot of kind of cool features. And there are a lot of USB ports on here that are 10 gig ports. So there is a lot of potential to go plug other things in. You have the serial ports that are on there, the dual NICs, plus the Wi-Fi and the tantalizing possibility of potentially using LTE in this. And I think this is actually a really interesting system. I also really just frankly love the fact that it's low power, it's fanless. And so from an environmental standpoint, I think that this system is actually pretty nice to have. For a desktop, I actually think that the non IoT version is actually a better system for a desktop. But once you start making trade-offs and you go from, you know, the IoT version where you get some of these features like the dual NICs or the, you know, silent operation, all those things, and you start moving to a form factor that's kind of that next generation higher end, I started thinking, well, now you're really getting into that area where why wouldn't you just go get a Project Tiny Mini Micro node, get the bigger system, have more expandability and, you know, get more RAM, get more storage, all that kind of stuff in there, get faster processors. And so I think that this is kind of more of an in-between and kind of stuck because it's an in-between solution. Whereas the M90N IoT is more of a kind of lower end solution that really is almost designed to be something like an x86 Raspberry Pi competitor. Now, I know I've been calling this a $200 system. And if you probably look on it, whenever this video comes out is probably not still going to be $200. And the reason for that is most likely because they will have sold out of whatever that $200 deal is, is. I think we just got it on an end of year deal, but it wasn't also like it was from a third party seller or it was from a very limited deal pool. We could actually, this deal was posted on the STH forums. We have a, I don't know if you guys know this, but we actually have a great deals form that you can check out and we'll have a link of that in the description. But before recording this video, I just noticed that we had something like over 1500 of these units were sold just on eBay. Plus they were available on the Lenovo.com site as well. So while the deal may not still be active, hopefully Lenovo has a deal on these systems again at the same or potentially even a lower price. In fact, I actually think if they had to unbundle the keyboard and mouse and maybe even this USB Type-C to HDMI adapter, I think maybe that wouldn't necessarily be the worst deal either. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Lenovo M90N IoT. This little system was actually really cool to get to test. And if you did like it, well, there are a couple things you could do to really help us out. First one is give this video a like, click subscribe, turn on the notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. Also, if you had any ideas, feel free to leave those in the comments. I just like to hear what you guys think about this hardware. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.